good morning to wherever you are morning to the world welcome to Duma on a beautiful morning I guess it's a Monday for a lot of people start of a new day and a new week my name is Mark Jason is on camera with me this morning morning you sleep well I sleep very well thanks and you I yes said well thanks like a baby sometimes I was awake at two times but well enough well rested hope you enjoyed our fireside chat last night wonderful afternoon although we had a few problems but at least we managed to see Perula after uh, all our troubles were over now there were a pair of fish eagles this morning I think they're roosting on this open area off the Zoe's Road near Florentine because it's, I've seen them here before in the morning and the one morning we were watching the sunrise and we were just about to go live and they flew away just before we went live so see if we can, if they might still be there this morning beautiful sound of the the call of the fish eagle. It's like the known as the Lord of the African sky. Well, the call of the fish eagle is synonymous with the bush felt. And all that comes with it, I suppose. Clear skies when I woke up this morning. It was still dark, there were stars, and now it's clouded over pretty quickly. Sadly. No, the fish eagles are gone. They have left their building. Might not be so overcast that we don't get much of a sunrise, but no, we'll have to wait. Gone back to the lake, the dam. I don't think we're gonna hmm. see if we can get to quarantine for the sunrise or to the dam, Gary Dam, the waterfall. Hopefully, getting the camera up today or soon. Monday, it's only me this morning. Our uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday morning drives are going to be only one vehicle. That gives us the opportunity to switch crew around a little bit. And some people have a little bit of a break. But this morning, Scott and Nikki are having a little break. Vim is in final control. Well, the three of us will try and do our best to bring you a fantastic morning.
ground is getting a little misty, isn't it? I feel like it as well. Yeah, it's a little bit damp. I don't have anything special in mind because I like to keep an open mind. I like to just want to go around maybe have a larger circle or something shows itself or I can find some tracks or until something pushes us in a different direction. But I thought you did. Do a few circles around for your Taylor Lodge. Karula was here last time, so prudently we have a an idea of where the bike has gone from to the Taylor Lodge. It hasn't left it yet.
down to Gary Dam. You can see the rising from a different perspective as we go down towards the dam. Another thing I've noticed almost every morning, that beautiful marula tree, that skeleton of a marula tree that the sun is rising through, you'll see a number of birds at the top of the tree. And every morning these, I see these European bee eaters here, they seem to be collecting, I guess they're getting ready to migrate back north to Europe. Isn't that beautiful? Even in death, trees are fantastic. Skeleton of a tree. About as far as gravity. No, maybe a little longer. Pink mist hanging over the valley.
I predict a hipper in our immediate future. Silent, silent engine we were using. That's the Newton drive, gravity drive. Specially adapted for pushing. Allows us to travel silently without the noise of an engine. Sunlight now streaming through up to the dam. Can we have Q Karula? Can we have a, an elephant, please? Why don't we let giraffe went? We had a big male giraffe that was here for a little while. He was saw him a couple of times below the dam wall. Seemed to be enjoying a lot of this vegetation here in the in the riverbed. Very different to riparian vegetation. Hyena's still whooping behind me. I'm guessing it must be near the den. this mother hippo. I was sitting at Biffleswick Dam, the, the, the mother hippo that's sometimes here was with her baby there, with a bull hippo, and baby was actually sleeping on mom's back. But we have seen that before. any little noses pop up for air yet.
Where did she go last night? In the river bed, under the fence, onto that strip over there. So far, no tracks of her. Lots of any tracks around here, but we were here with elephants. Only recently. Although there are elephant tracks on top of last night's car trucks. Elephants around. Well, I suppose one thing he's clever about is being able to hide inside the camp to keep the safe from other things that don't get inside the camp. Uh, what this elephant did. From the cold. I don't know if we want to see that, but I suppose. And this is interesting, it's very similar to what I experienced some time ago. When I yeah, I mean, it's, ni it's nature, it's life, this is what it is. It's the reality of, of, I guess I can blame it on climate change. We've had exceptionally or we've had a few cold snaps that have come through. In fact, the one plant that has been hit the most has been the monkey orange. And there are a lot of monkey oranges that are showing signs of having cold wind touching them. And I would imagine that that's possibly what happened to this poor child. I did see a similar a similar thing a few years ago here at Juma, and we could see where like, almost like it was a band of frost swept down the Milwati River, and it was in a very tree that, or it was in a tree that got hit pretty hard, where a chameleon must have been sleeping, and I suppose the colder it got, the more the chameleon couldn't move, and eventually it just froze on the tree. This one has too. Uh, nothing's found it, probably very, because it's so well camouflaged. Put child's back leg still clutching the branch, but it is sadly it has moved on. Put child. Uh, Maina came through here last night. Now there are a number of Nyala that live inside the lodge because the Nyala know how to get in and out of that fence. Actually, they just go over it. And I'm wondering if Karula might not have found herself a snack. Nyala dinner. Dry season. Oh, 
ordinarily frost doesn't ever occur here. This has always been just above the frost line because of our altitude and latitude. But that was the past. Sorts of new things happening to weather nowadays. But climate is the very thing that drives change in the wild, in nature, on the planet. In fact, the last, the history of the planet has been driven by changes in climate. So climate change is not a new concept. Rather, I should say changes in climate. Changes in climate that, that drive uh, the speciation, the, the diversity of the planet. Nothing can really stay the same. There's no such real, there's no real thing as balance of nature. No balance. Constantly fluctuating, whether it's wet or dry or extra wet or extra dry where the animals can and plants can adapt to changing conditions rapid or otherwise determines whether they are successful as a species so it's might be just something new to us as humans and it might be exacerbated by human activity on the planet. But it is kind of a part of what our planet is all about, really. Wild Earth. This is our morning safari, the beginning of the week, Monday morning, reaching the end of March already. I'm gonna have to think of an April Fool. I've been thinking already. Have you? area that they can cover we're in the middle of well, we're part of several million acres one of the biggest national parks so it is exciting it can be even more so this is not a preserve this is not a fenced in area this is not a safari park where animals have designated places and they you go from one to the other if an elephant wants to walk a hundred miles an elephant can walk a hundred miles or more we're very lucky though because there are a lot of animals that are quite 
territorial. They're very particular about where they live. Our morning takes, I think, all quiet on Western Gary. Um, Mbubu Road coming round back to Gallagher Shortcut. I'm heading up now to Sandy Patch. I just did a little bit of Zay's Road to Rebecca's and back. Ah, uh, negative. Okay, copy. I think Bernie was going to check twin dams and then a PC car. Negative, they have uh, been at Zoe's Rebecca's Junction, that one. I thought was a quiet Western Gowrie. This area that we drive on is known as Western Gowrie. And a lot of radioactivity all of a sudden. A lot of guys may be leaving a little bit later than normal. Uh, maybe because they're landowners or private guests. Or just people who didn't want to go out early. So I thought we were alone on Western Gowrie, which makes things a little difficult sometimes and there's only one vehicle driving around it's up to us to see if we can find anything and it's always a dilemma like here yeah, do I go left or do I go straight because I don't know what I'm going to miss out on if I, go, if I miss the left turn well, the giraffe's still heading west so we shall too for now But any road has as great a chance of finding something as another. But when there are other vehicles out, it helps us to find game because they can cover different areas. So we chat on the radio and discuss where each vehicle will, which area one will cover. Now, if you are a new viewer, please let us know. You can write to us. At Questions at wildearth.tv. Send an email and you can ask us questions. VM will send that through to me and I'll see if I can answer them. Depends on the question. Or it depends on my knowledge. Okay. Evidently, this maybe that's why it's been a bit quiet this morning. Can't get through to the email. We can't somehow get onto email. I guess if you want, you can send a tweet. Hashtag Safari Live if you want. If you have sent an email and you're wondering why it hasn't come through, that's possibly why. Fill that for me, please. 
Du Laray. Du Laray, I think. Send a tweet. Not animal related question. Jason related question. I don't know the answers, Jason. Why did it Romeo? Uh, I'll, I'll tell you how it came about that everybody got names after Jason tells you about the Romeo part. I think you should go first. Okay. Well, when the drive started back in... Like hoopers. I like hoopers too. African hoopoo with his crest raised sitting on a... Poop poop. Can't do it properly. Nothing like that. More like that. Bird we can hear in the distance is a ghost bird, grey headed bush shrike. Well when the drive started was before my before I started. It was in November when the drive started with Hayden and Peter and the earlier crew. Although most of them are here now, not most, a couple of them, Brian and Jason and Viam. For radio signals, for radio calls, for talking on the radio, Mr. Fox decided to. Was it was it Will's decision, yep. or was it Peter? I don't know, it just happened. It just happened that everybody got a nickname for radio communication. So that anyway, so I can't even remember who was who. I think the only two that stuck were Wildebeest. Wildebeest. VM was Wildebeest. 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 Um, there's your hoopoo in the road now, doing what hoopoos do, poking around in the ground with that very sharp beak of theirs, very similar to the way Hardy does feed, he says, changing the subject. <laughs> do, do they smell bad, like everyone says? I believe so, yes. I believe they do. Wie Hopf. Sharon, Clown Sharon. Hello, morning to you. Some people call it African bush. Some people call it African jungle, which is correct. Or can you use both? Jungle is not really correct because the, the there isn't really jungle in Africa. We don't really have jungle. It's bush felt or savannah African bush. It's bush or bush felt. Or just the bush. So we have forests up in East Africa. There are rainforest and, and also West Africa. It's more rainforest than jungle. I did catch something there just shortly. a bit forward. Oh. I frightened it away. No, I didn't. The car did. The land, the vehicle did. I think it's time that Kahumas came home. It's a juvenile. That's been away for too long. And the Matimbas.
fan of cats today. Drive into the sunrise. So, I guess we better answer that then. Although we might have signal issues. How did they choose Romeo? Well, the running joke is that because Casanova's too long for the radio. Ah. Uh. But I don't know actually why. It's a series of events that unfolded. I see, and you reflect. And then. I know, it just stuck. Also. What's. How do I. Uh, nah. <laughs> it just is, that's what they it call just me. Is. Okay. It just came about. Yeah. And this is now our northern boundary, by the way. Road, the full sort of cut line. Cut lines, normally when we talk about a cut line, it's normally a boundary. Although, because it's a boundary from days gone by when there used to be fences, I guess. I guess many, many years ago, the government at the time would have subdivided this land with the intention of, of, of selling it off to private landowners for farming purposes. But a lot of the people that bought the land were people who already, back in the 40s, 50s, and way back in time, were people who were already in interested in wildlife and it was way back in the 1950s that a lot of the internal fences of the Sabi sand came down to create a much bigger conservation area, private conservation area and that's when the Sabi sand was declared as a private nature reserve.
How does the vulture in a tree down this way? Well, there was one on Gallagher shortcut yesterday, and shortly after, Karula was seen in that vicinity. Now, this isn't very far from that. But it's a white-backed vulture by the looks of things. It's a fairly large vulture. I can't imagine a vulture of that size being bothered with a small kill like a leopard's kill. You never know these things. Vulture? Oh, sure. Sorry. It's okay. Are you... I was thinking about what you were saying and not showing the people. <laughs> We'll get one of these days one of those thought controlled camera mounts where you just think about things and the camera turns almost like the pilot's heads up display that does helmets. <laughs> Although that, that would work because if you, if you so wherever I look the camera goes. Then we don't need a camera person anymore, so maybe we don't need that. Oh, I could just wear it. That, or you could just wear it. And you just point at what I must look at. Oh, that's true. And you don't I have to wear it. I didn't know any hat. better. I'd say that this vulture has a full crop. <laughs> Put the union on me. Yeah. The cameraman union. I don't know if it's the way it's sitting, but I think it. Well, it might be the neck feathers, but I think it's got a full crop. Maybe we'll see it better from further on. Unfortunately, very difficult to find. Unless there are vultures on the ground, unless there are more vultures or more scavenging birds. Very difficult to figure out where it is that vulture is focusing its attention on or why a vulture is sitting in a particular place. Now, I do know that it's still cool right now. There are no thermals. It could just be that a vulture ended up here last night because it was nearby and it needed a roost for the day for the night so that it can fly home today. And it's simply too cold to get into the air right now. There are no thermals yet, so... It would be too much energy for a bolt to fly now. Now between here and where... Or possibly even the same bolt that we saw yesterday evening. On some carcasses, I've seen vultures up to 500 yards away in trees over a 500 meter radius. Maybe not that big, 250 meters, 500 diameter. And not necessarily always that close to or always looking at a carcass. Could be anywhere if there is something around here. something
Lenny and Schweinfeld, ja. Lenny and Schweinfeld, ja. Vols Marula. We need to look for a Woodlands Kingfisher today also. We went yesterday and that was like when we went live. I mean, at um, Tundam. Yeah. I mean, three hours down. I saw one also diving into a dam yesterday. The okay. Wiffles are coming. Well, she should go to a dam. Yes. When it's hotter, warmer, later in the day. Because any day now will be the last time we see. Oh, Donna. Morning, Donna. Did I ever find out more about filament's dip and the filament's cut line? I think Donnie's asking about whether we found out more about filament. Well, a little bit. Don't fly, don't fly. Fly like breasted roller. Okay, maybe since there doesn't seem to be much moving about except maybe the few birds. But let's do a bird quiz. I'll find a bird and viewers have to tell me what it is. Donna went, oh, see, I talk and then the bird flies. Hmm, doesn't talk so loud. Poor little marula tree. going to fall down soon. It's not now. Made it. Made it. Filament was Yuri's father, when Yuri's father had this property, before, I suppose when Yuri was a kid. Oh, it's a plated lizard. Was, it is. was slid down that termite now behind it into a hole. Looked like a tawny plated lizard. look for more reptiles too, but especially now, the temperatures dropping in the evening, they'll be out warming up in the morning. Well, there's a bird, but that's an easy one. We've done that one. We've done that one, but there are other birds behind it in the same wattle. Oh, a little flock of them. I can get that one in the... Which one in the way, in the Terminalia? Yeah. Or I need to go forward. That was the magpie shrike, the big one with the long tail. Also black and white, but more black than with the little white. These, they're, oh. Almost. Did you get it? There's another one there. And they're flying behind. They're... They're... No, drop in. They're too busy. They are busy little bodies. Go away, you bird, eating buffalo thorn berries. <laughs> anyway, there are definitely some anecdotes to learn from the time when Philemon was, I suppose, the main, before this was a lodge, when it was just a just Gauri. Philemon was a character who pretty much ran, looked after the place, would have made most of the roads. Ow. This is quite cute. And I was asked the other day, I think it was RC was asking me about them regurgitating berries and well <laughs> can't, puts its weight on the branch and then can't reach. Same, Louis. 
go away bird or those berries all they are edible and palatable but I need to get a buffalo thorn close to the road that I can pick a berry and I can show you sort of a cross section through the, the, the fruit well there isn't really much fruit there's this quite a big stone and a little bit of a leathery skin and you need to eat a lot of them to be able to taste them they're hard to peel because the fruity part is sort of almost attached to the skin so you've got to eat them with the skin they dry very quickly okay let's move along we've got the lovely chorus of these magpie shrikes as we sit here The starfish flower is a okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was on it right Starfish flower into it. So, Charlie was asking about the Star flower, the starfish flower, the Stapelia gigantea. There's that little black and white monster flying across the road in a little flock. Um, it has another. It had another bud, flower bud that should be opening. We can maybe if we get there today. I'm trying to think where should we go. Anyway, it's just as good as anywhere else. There was one more flower about to come. I'm sure it'll probably flower again after that one too. Um, so we'll be looking for more. We're also looking for a particular succulent creeper that I have seen. I can't remember where I saw it. Another flower that should be starting to come into, or another plant that should be coming into flower soon is the, is the large type of Crassula that grows here. I see their flower stalk starting. It's also a succulent. Family of Crassulacea. Crassulas and Calanchoe. Interesting thing about creepers, by the way, I don't know if you know that, but here in the southern hemisphere, creepers grow counterclockwise up their host plants, and in the northern hemisphere, they grow clockwise. If you have any creepers, especially now with spring coming in the northern hemisphere, take note of which way they climb way the tendrils twirl. And I'm going to see if I can find anything now this morning. We'll try and find as many creepers as we can. I've just seen one now. Here's one in front of me but it's dying because of the cold. I'm not sure what that was but here is the lucky bean creeper. It doesn't have any fruits or seeds yet. Um, can hardly see it. Find a better example. Vines and creepers. Oh, and also, if Teresa's with us this morning, I've noticed quite a few monkey oranges coming into well, fruit. Fruit's getting bigger. And gardenias pretending to be monkey oranges. Yeah.
I'll just go again with it. I didn't quite understand. The people. No, I don't understand the. Okay, William asked a question, but I don't quite understand it, William. Maybe I'm being a little... Then, ooh, wolf mongoose dive down a hole. Which direction do they grow in? William was asking a question. No, maybe you can elaborate for me, William. I'm afraid I'm not quite understanding it question. I'm not sure what you're referring to. Please help me with that. Lots of early tracks here. Yeah? you busy with elephant on this road. It looks like yesterday is busy. Now the cold has hit the Terminalia. Hmm. There's one in front of us. What is normally the silver cluster leaf showing a little bit of browning on some of the leaves. This one, I mean, it's really strange. Like just a, a lick of cold air that must have come through. Oh, this is a bad plant. First one I've seen here for a while. Need to tell somebody about it. This is a plant that we need to take out. Very many people will be very will be familiar with it. Classic example of a cladode. It's an illegal alien from Central America, South America, maybe the southern parts of North America. It has been grown, it has been farmed agriculturally in this country for the fruits which are turned into a preserve or just sold in, in, in grocers. Commonly known as the jointed cactus or prickly pear. Any other names? Anybody have any other names? Apart from its scientific name, which is Opuntia. And it is very hard to eradicate. eradicate. It is probably one of the most aggressive alien invading species we have in this country. It is also, in some places, illegal to have because of its ability to spread and take over indigenous vegetation. And interestingly, an insect was brought in to help control that plant in places where it has become invasive. An insect known as cochineal, like a scale insect, which is actually a bug. It's a true bug, not just a bug bug. Cochineal, eating up the opuntia. Fortunately, baboons and kudu get the fruit and they spread it. Also, those leaves, those pillows break off and they can just grow again. And if you don't get all the roots out, it will recoppice. And there are different species of apuntia that we get here. Yeah, I have some at home and I've, I can't get rid of. And it's very difficult because you, once you pull it out of the ground, where do you put it so that it doesn't grow again? I try, I put it, I tie it upside down, 
take the roots and I'll tie it into a tree and hang it upside down and hope that it'll dry out. But I'm, sometime six months later, it's still growing. Roots exposed, hanging upside down. Okay, what's next? We've done some pretty heavy loops, big loops, small loops. We're coming back to the Taylor Access Road. Maybe, maybe Sandy Pet to pile a plane might be an idea. And then we'll go over to the eastern side of Germany. We've covered quite a little bit of northwest this morning. No news from William yet on his question. Jeepers, creepers, where'd you get those creepers? Is that what it was, William? Try Ingwe. Lovely life. Clouds moved over to the northwest, and with the sun coming up in the east, light against the cloud, the sunlight against the cloud is look how bright it is. What's that again? Okay, so I think we didn't work. Shuvukani uh, was lowercase h. Look, some Impala. Oh, it is a Chagra. Can we get that Chagra? Under the under the canopy. Okay. Let's chase the wax bull out. Black cat Chagra. Hey. Yeah. Yes. That's what kind of noise it makes. Black crown Chagra. Or used crown. to be known as a three streaked Chagra. Bye bye Chagra. And you also got a glimpse of a blue wax bull that the Chagra was getting nasty with. I guess Lubukani didn't work. Where are you off to, Impala? Why did the Impala cross the road? There were some Red Bull Buffalo Weavers there, but they've gone.
William, I have that song in my head. What do you call a creeper? A vine, perhaps. <coughs> and of course that giraffe must have gone elsewhere because I can't find his tracks anymore. He's headed onto another property. Thank you. And I can see a warthog. You don't see warthogs too often. They're quite particular about their habitat, but also the grasses are quite long elsewhere. And this little family, oh, there's a little piglet there too. Shorter grasses out here.
I'm only seeing that one little piglet. I wonder if this is that crowd from that family from Sandy Patch that is down here. Now that would be the mum, the one, the one, the one on the right, the one that walked out to the right. You can see she's got slightly bigger tusks. And then the other adult is actually a sub-adult. That would maybe be her piglet, the daughter from a previous litter that helps with the new litter. And then the one little one on the right now is one of the new litter. The young males tend to leave after the first year. And little one, I'm guessing, probably around three to four months old. Typically they give birth in December, in the summer. We also don't get to see them for length of time like we're seeing them now. Very often we find warthog, they run away from us. They are quite shy animals. But often the vegetation is pretty dense and I think it's mostly because they're quite nervous in thick vegetation. Here in the open they can see quite well. And perhaps a lot more at ease. Well, there we go. That's a little boy. It's not her daughter from a previous litter. It's a little boy from a previous litter. Just had to wait until it turned around. Although I suppose I should have looked at the face closer with my binoculars. Can't really see on, this, on my small screen. But male warthog will have... The male has four 
or two pairs of warts on his face. And well, it was easier to see as a little boy from the back, from the back. Unusual, I would say, in that he's still with her. That is usually the little girls stay behind. Look at the mosaic of colour on the opposite slope to us. Warthogs and the cats. Morning, Savannah. Nice to hear from you again, from Georgia. Savannah from Savannah. Do we see bush hogs? No, we don't. We don't get them here, Savannah. They do not occur here. I don't know. guess you either referring to the giant forest hog or the bush pig. Interesting spider. By the web, though. I don't put that on camera. It's a reclusive family of the golden orb. Just wouldn't translate well. Bush pigs, although they are nocturnal as opposed to warthogs being diurnal. As far as I know, bush pigs maybe occur further up in the northern bit of Kruger. But I don't think there are any bush pigs down in this end of the world. Anna Marie. Are warthogs common prey for cheetah? Yes, Anna Marie. In uh, some cases. I've known cheetah, in fact, there was a pretty well known cheetah in the sort of southern part of the Sabi Sand many, many years ago. Oh, look, there's a wildebeest. There was a cheetah female who obviously had learnt this from her mother. She taught her kids how to chase warthog and their and their piglets. Maybe he's off to Maybe he's off to Arethusa. Anyways, 
the edge of the Sabi sand. I know I was talking about places that this, the whole area here, unfenced and very vast area. However, the western boundary of the Kruger National Park is fenced and it needs to be because there is settlements or there are settlements, there is civilization, there is there are people just outside the reserve and to keep wildlife separate from humanity to minimize the conflict between human and animals there is a fence it's an electric fence and there was a cheetah that had learned or had been taught how to chase animals into the fence mainly warthog Uh, that's good good news. What where, what did you use? Stop it. The mail's up and running again. I'd say he's heading up towards maybe as far as Arethusa airstrip. We have Arethusa just on the right hand side of us now. And although I'm not too fond of driving this main on this main road, it's quite an active main road, especially a Monday morning, likely to be contractors and deliveries. Let's see what he's going to be doing. Jean in Washington. Jean, Jeannie. Asking about the wildebeest. Will he be with his herd again this dry season or do we have to wait till spring? Uh, probably we'll have to wait till spring, although I'm sure the females might move through an area. What's interesting is, I guess since It is that time of the year when the females just move around on their own. They don't stay within a bull's territory because their calves have grown up enough. The bulls don't really occupy the territories in the way that they normally do. But generally what happens is a bull finds himself in open area and he creates a dust bowl where he has his midden. And he waits for the females to come to him. He doesn't go and find them. And, well, he's making his way probably towards the airstrip. There are a couple of open areas just off of this main road inside Arethusa. Could be making his way to one of those. just going to be grazing out here in the in this tree line for the day and he'll be back in the open at night if only he knows where what he's doing it's fairly open here 
fairly decent area for a wildebeest to spend the day. But it'll probably be spring before we see the females come back. Morning Marco, New Jersey, does the Pied Crow occur here? It does, but not very common. I think the Pied Crow being the opportunist that it is, being a crow, tends to favour cities and, and villages outside or away from the reserve. Having said that though, every now and then we do get crows come through. It was only last week, in fact, we had a tired crow that came around camp in between drives, sort of middle of the day, flying around. And I've got, uh, I'm quite sure that, it, that it's a crow that probably comes around to all the lodges and sees it to, to have a look and see if it can scrounge anything, and then flies back out to the villages. Once we get the camera up and running again at Gary Waterhole or Gary Dam, maybe we'll get lucky with Pike Pro there from time to time. stations mark uh, any update in the west Okay, copied. Not much happening on Gauri. Uh, is there a lineup for that uh, sighting on parallel? Uh, maybe later. I'm guessing shadow. There are some elephants. Just finding out what's going on on Arathusa, since we are on the border between Gari, which is Juma, on the left, and Arathusa Safari, which is on the right. I don't want to just go onto the property without knowing where things are, and just another road in, which is known as Parallel, Elephant Alley, there's another road called Elephant Alley, this, if I had to take this road, I would get there. There are six vehicles on standby and two vehicles, or I'm not sure, two or three at the sighting. So it's going to be a while, considerable while. Oh, big man leopard. That would be Tingana, but he's
maybe in about half an hour or more. The problem is that if each vehicle is there for about that are there and five vehicles that still have to go through that sighting it could be easily an hour Did you get that question? No, because I had to turn it down because of the radio other radio. And then from Michigan wants to know where the B Oh sorry. Lynn in Michigan wanting to know where the B E thing go. Probably to south of France, parts of Europe, to Carmarth. Uh, not really sure. I have to. And there were some drongos behaving strangely, and then. Came out of nowhere in a white pickup. They're gone now. They were like hovering over the grass as well, almost as though there was a snake or something. Oh, they're Franklins. That's what it is. There's a small family of Franklins in the grass, and they are probably. The, the, the drongos are probably getting insects that the Franklins are missing. Crested Frank Collins. Hello, Drongos. Okay, let's. Hello, Drongo. Good morning Elizabeth. Elizabeth is asking about leopards. Don't, el don't leopards only come out at night? No, not at all Elizabeth. In fact, you will find in some places leopards can actually be more active during the day than they are at night. Sometimes. We've seen leopards any time of the day. I've seen leopards hunting in the heat of summer's days. One o'clock, two o'clock in the afternoon. But then again, I've seen lion hunting at two o'clock in the afternoon as well, on a very, very hot day. You'll find that leopard might move around in daylight hours because, well, particularly in areas where there are maybe higher concentrations of, of competitive predators like hyena and lion and it's a time of day when those predators, hyena and lion, 
are more likely to be asleep and, and, and lethargic. But yes, they are quite active at night and their device a bit of a, a bit divisive. Sometimes they're active at night, sometimes during the day. No real hard and fast rule when it comes to leopards. They are opportunists and unpredictable. Thank you, Nikki. Good morning, Nikki. I've covered a little bit of the northwest and the west. I haven't really been anywhere east and south, although I'm around Treehouse Dam now. Maybe Bifflesook Dam. See the cut line side? Uh, also, no sign of Karula coming out of the lodge. Maybe you want to have a look around in the lodge. No, we can't drive in there, so it doesn't really matter if she is in there. Scott and Nikki are going to give us a hand this morning trying to find some wildlife. Hello Bill, interesting question from Bill, are animal paths, and I suppose, uh, what else was it, animal paths and, and, and places checked for snares, yes they are, there are regular patrols that are out, anti-poaching patrols, but there are also pretty, pretty regular patrols along the fence lines and along the boundaries to make sure that there are no strangers coming in to, 
to, to set snares, I guess. Uh, I found a few at home, though. I think the security here at the Sabi Sand is, is, is pretty good at the moment. It's, it's pretty secure and fortunately not too much of that kind of poaching going on. <coughs> Excuse me. It came out of nowhere. Must be the sneezewood. Yeah. That one sneezewood tree on Galaga Shumta. Morning, Ginny. From Virginia. I'm Mark from Mars. Ginny from Virginia is asking if we have orchids here. And do they grow from the ground or are they epiphytes? I'm smelling something. Blocked as my sinuses are. Oh, oh, there's a dead hyena up in front of us. We saw it yesterday. Dead hyena? Yeah, better. Really? Really, really. Nobody told me about it. It's rather depressing subject. I guess. Life and death in the African bush folk. Yeah. Oh, that's a very small one too. What's that? Is that a No. A lot of carcass beetles on it. Very smelly. That's unusual. What is your diagnosis? I can't. No idea. No idea. Just even looking at that, just if, if I'd seen it when it, had, when it was still complete, I would have been able to do a post-mortem. Or at least some sort of autopsy to decide what, how it died. If there were any visible signs. Of course, if there are no visible signs, it could be anything. Snake bite. But it's been there too long now. What a carcass beat. Um, sorry, Ginny, I got sidetracked because there was suddenly a strong smell of an animal. And I'm thinking we need to visit the hyena then to see if that older cub is there. That one that's about five, six months old. That little one looks about that size. Could have been killed by another cat. But they eat it though. Not necessarily. We have two types of orchids here, Jenny, that we've seen that we've managed to photograph over time with their flowers. There are very few of them actually. Tree orchids, they are epiphytes. They belong to the genus Ancelia. 
Encelia gigantea. And there are two subspecies of Encelia gigantea that we get here. Now, as far as ground dwelling orchids, morning boys, bachelor boys, they must be getting ready to compete for females soon. For ground-dwelling orchids, I have to say I've never seen a ground-dwelling orchid here. But having said that, I found a ground orchid at home this last summer. And it's possible that they would occur here too. Down in the Cape, when I lived down in the Cape for a little while, it was wonderful to discover all the different ground orchids, ceteriums, um, a whole host of ground-dwelling orchids that occur in the Cape. And the one that I have at home that I think is the one, well, I think it is, um, is, uh, as far as I can tell, a Eulophia species, E-U-L-O-P-H-I-A, Eulophia. Eulophia streptopetala could be that one. Beautiful yellow orchid. And my entire life I've never seen a ground orchid in that area before. And then it just so happened that the rainfall and lack of sunshine, I suppose, the type of rain that we had was the perfect conditions for it to flower. You know, often we'll have plants that throw up their leaves in the summer but if you don't get the right succession of, of cloud cover or rainfall and sunshine some plants need some of the lilies for example some of the really delicate lace lilies they need the right amount of rainfall coupled with the right amount of sunshine and then follow up rainfall to throw a flower and sometimes a flower only lasts a day go years without getting them flowering with only the leaves coming up and I think it's the same to a large extent with the orchids uh, and many other flowers for, for that matter but if you don't have the right sequence of, of climate of weather you won't even know that they're there because the leaves are so hard to recognize amongst the grasses and all the other small plants being an amateur botanist as such as I am. I think if I was more academically trained or if I was, I don't know, I think I'd have a better idea, fly, I'd have a better idea how to classify things. I've had one fly that has been dogging me all morning. but I can't see them. Oh, there's another one. That dead tree, isn't that a little succulent? It looks like a crassula. Chris. Morning, Chris. How long does Impala rut last for? Uh, about a month. A little succulent growing inside the dead log. It looks like it could be a crassula. And I can hear baby dwarf mongoose. You hear those high pitched squeaks? Mm -hmm. Juvenile, baby dwarf mongoose that are squeaking. Or being carried by adults.
okay. If you haven't reminded me, I should try to find a small herd of impala that has where a male has already started. Kind of trying to get in there early. We saw a small group of impala yesterday with the dominant male. And I guess he's jumping the gun a bit, trying to secure a herd before the rut starts. But he might still be ousted before the females come into estrus. A little bit early, March. That would bring them that would bring them birthing in September, October, so not likely. Still looking for buffalo thorn fruit to show you. Maybe the buffalo thorn on the dam wall here at Treehouse Dam and then after that we'll go past an orchid for, for Ginny, Virginia. And then we'll go past the starfish flower and see if that bud has opened up and hopefully there'll be an animal or two along the way or a bird or an insect. Lizard. Enough now. Morning, Helen. In Oregon. Where in Oregon? Pine. Okay. How do you tell a male leopard from a female leopard's track? Mostly size, Helen. I mean, no fruits on this buffalo thorn. And there's no one here at Treehouse Dam. But there is a Woodlands Kingfisher. They're definitely not calling anymore. I haven't heard one for days now. So 
so we can tick off what is it today the 30th of March is still present Take this flyer's pilot license away. With the grow worry branch. Morning, Dara in Iowa. Dara is asking, how common is it for? Well, Dara is referring to the warthog out on Arethusa airstrip. There's that older warthog and then her daughter, and there's seven piglets. How common is it? How for 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 all seven to survive to adulthood? Very uncommon, considering a number of factors. First of all. The fact that they live out there on the airstrip, out in the open, well, they spend a lot of time out in the open on that airstrip. So they're vulnerable to cheetah, lion, leopard, eagles, snakes, all sorts of things. And there are pythons around that are possible predators of little warthogs. Let's see, staff now, uh, I'm not even seeing the blossom. I saw a blossom there yesterday. Stapelia doesn't have a flower at the moment. Go forward a little bit. There's a, a bud at the back. I'm sure there's other Stapelia around. That's the only one that I've noticed. I think 
those two females, that older female and the younger female, I think they've done exceptionally well to keep all of those little warthogs alive, to keep them all safe. We had a warthog with five piglets on Sandy Patch. When I first got here at the beginning of the season, there were five new little ones. And I think the warthog we saw this morning, I think that's the family with only one left. I've seen a baboon kill, I think it was five, or was it three? I think three piglets in the space of minutes. Kill and eat piglets up in East Africa. Baboon of all things. Big male baboon. that flower bud was eaten off of that stupelia. Morning Arquette. Arquette. I don't know if we're pronouncing it correctly, Arkia in Arkansas. Will the weavers return to their nests or will they make new ones? Look here, several vines, creepers climbing up this quarry. You can see how it goes. And that baby jackal breed is another one there. This is jasmine creeper actually. Clockwise climbing up. In fact, that piece there, it's been there so long, it's actually strangling it almost. Let me go back a little bit. 
see how the quarry has grown with the vine snaking in the, deep into this trunk. Now the weaver nests become homes to a lot of other things for the rest of the season and going into the dry season. And the grasses, of course, what happens also uh, is that the, the grass of the nest becomes very, very dry and brittle and they're no good to be nesting in in the next season. So they will be broken down or they might even fall down by then weathering. Go ahead, Scott. Okay, copy, thanks. But I still want to find a Sissus. Sissus retundifolius. Spelled C I S S U S. In fact, there are two types of Sissus. Sissus. Sissus quadrangulata. Sissus rotundifolia. Interesting creepers. Ought to be some tree orchids down here in the dip because we're close to a big tree orchid, one of the biggest tree orchids that I've seen here on Juma. There have been some tree orchids in this dip many years ago. There was a tree fallen, pushed over down here that had a little tree orchid in, and I tried to save it, but I couldn't. I think it was this knob thorn that was pushed across the road. Lynn from Michigan, didn't we see an orchid up in a tree on the limb? You mean that one, Lynn? That's the, and it's got some seed on it from the flowers that it had a little bit far off. It's also looking into the sunlight, but you'll be able to see the silhouette of it nicely. There you go. You can see some of the pods from the flowers on the left of that. That's one of the big orchids that we have here at Juma. There are a couple of smaller orchids. There is uh, two small. There are two smaller orchids on Rebecca's Road. There are still a couple more orchids in trees dotted along this drainage line off of this road, known as Elephant Skull, that I'm guessing are offspring of that big orchid. Because I think that orchid up there in that dead leadwood is very old, hasn't really changed much in the six years that I've known it. Somewhere in here I'm sure there are other orchids. If I remember correctly walking this drainage line, you can see some in the drainage line. It looks like a big nalotica. Big acacia with those pods on it. No, not Nalotica. Must be Robusta. Nalotica grows more round, round.
How about being able to study Brian's mom's skull? That's also from Arkansas. Morning, Arquette, again. See, there's another one of those Harvey eyes, the Albizias, Jason. That's a smaller one. That's a smaller one. Mostly only in drainage lines. The skull is still a little bit smelly. The skull isn't quite ready to play with yet. Oh, wrong word, play with, but study. I'll have a look at it again today and see if I can't speed up the process somehow. But soon, I think soon we need to do something with that skull. Very interesting. Been looking at every termite mound in case there's a plated lizard or a mongoose. I think things are slow to get going this morning because it was chilly. Another, there's another fig starting to develop in this tree. This knob thorn. You can see its roots are starting to climb down the trunk. In fact, I would, I can actually see root that's probably already touching the ground aerial roots. Once the course, once they touch the ground and they start absorbing nutrients from the ground, it grows a lot quicker than having just aerial roots. And eventually the roots wrap themselves around the trunk of the tree. And as the roots grow and thicken, so does the host tree try to grow and thicken. But of course, the roots that are now encircling the trunk of the tree cannot expand, so the tree actually strangles itself. It grows and it becomes so well, become strangled by the roots of the fig. Unfortunately, I don't think any of us will be around to see that because it will take another 50 years, 60 years, more.
Squirrel. Oh, did you drop your nuts? Oh, he's gone up the tree. I'm sure it'll come back to the... He's running with a marula nut. Tried to jump into a little twig and dropped his marula nut. <laughs> Ever since seeing the movie The Ice Age, that lovely animated movie, I can't help but think of when I see our squirrels with the marula nuts, I can't help but think of the movie and the squirrel in that movie. Dams is also receding fast. Oh, that's interesting. Back to back stalks. Oh, the blacksmith lapwings obviously have a nest there. Or nearby. I'm not happy about the stalks. Woolly next stalk. And of course the buffalo, sorry I forgot to mention, gee look at the buffalo at the water, what a surprise. Where are the buffalo cows and calves? Well, I heard of a herd, a herd that made an appearance on Biffles this morning. It might have been those just talking about the tracks. The light coming behind this stalk now, you can see why it's called a woolly neck. see it now because it's moving. The big what we call breeding herds of buffalo move over quite considerable distances and we just haven't had any of them coming through Juma for some time now so if you've, if you've been watching for a couple of months now you might call a fairly large herd of buffalo that was up on Rebecca's Road near the Hyena Den. I reckon that was probably around February or end of January even. Early February, maybe even earlier than that. Could have even been December. But it's been some time now. The big herds need a lot of grazing. So they don't really stay in the same place. They, they move all the time. They'll, they'll rest up for the night and chew the cud perhaps. But generally... Every day they're on the move to a different place. Sometimes you might find they'll stay in an area and return to the same waterhole again, but generally they move in these they move in very large circles. So it'll be any day now that we might see a herd coming through. 
be nice to have some buffalo come through, flatten some of the dry grasses, leave, of course, leave lots of little packets of fertilizer in the ground. Melina. You better watch out, yeah. Pardon? You better watch out, yeah. Better yeah. watch out. Yeah. Oh, that watch out. Look, there's an ant on the dashboard. That's not an ant. What is it? Spider that pretends to be an ant. It's a saltisid spider that's an ant mimic. Watch out here. Big buffalo bean, yeah. There's some more. Valeria. Looking straight at the camera. That's a weird angle for you, but... Valeria. P-A-R-L-E R-I-A, Barlaria. Heliotropiums are losing, losing ground. Their flowers are not at all impressive this season. They haven't had a little moisture down here in the drainage line in the riverbed. This is the Mulwati River from Gauri Dam, which is essentially the same riverbed. The Gauri Dam is where it was dammed up to form the dam. It's the same drainage line. So. The 
water is too deep under the surface of the sand. the little flower while we're at it because it's early morning some of these are not going to be open by this evening lovely little heart-shaped leaf of type of morning glory probably astropomoya rather than ipomoya Let's see if I can find it So this little one is probably similar to the Pomoya Obscura. Anyway, it's tiny little, beautiful little yellow, almost trumpet-like, very typical of the Ipomoyas, the morning glories. And of course those lovely heart-shaped leaves. And they're morning flowers. There's a little more rain and it's supposed to have a bit more rain tomorrow. With a bit more rain we might get a few more flowers coming out. There are some flowers that are conspicuous by their absence. That, by the way, is a senna, the one on the ground. On that you, you pointed one out yesterday, actually. But I think that is an alien senna, if I'm not mistaken. Um, not like the big monkey pods that we have, this, the senna singuiana. doesn't have that center. I'll have to look at another book. But uh, that is one of them.
Hello Buffalo, I thought I heard horns knocking when we were looking at that center. Sorry boys. They're a little intimidated. They're right on the edge of the bank and I'm kind of blocking their path. So. I don't know if we're going to make it. I was hoping to maybe get back to Gauri Dam in case there was something there. It seems like it seems like I'm running out, running out of time for this morning's drive. It's been quite pleasant, although we haven't seen very much. It's been very pleasant. It's been a nice amble, with what we call a bumble, a slow bumble. This is the dreaded lug nut disappearing place. By the way, where we are now, somewhere here there's a lug nut from a Land Rover. A wheel nut. What do you see? A leopard tortoise. A leopard tortoise. Big leopard tortoise, actually. I wonder if that's also because there's rain coming. Maybe he's going to walk forward for us. Hello tortoisey. That's been about the pace of our drive this morning. It sums it up in a nutshell, no I mean in a tortoise shell. Uh, let me go in front of this little stunted leadwood. <laughs> Oh, he's turned his back on us. He's been in some mud. But the tortoise walking around could mean rain coming. I'm sure there are a number of you that are watching that have stayed up late and I want to thank you for your support for this drive. It's been wonderful having you on board and I hope to see you all again later after you've had a bit of a sleep. For those of you who are ahead of us in time, we'll see you in your morning. For those of you who are on our time, have a good day for your Monday and we will see you this afternoon, 4 o'clock our time. Central African time. Jason has been on camera, Vim has been in final control and my name is Mark from all of us here at Wild Earth. Take care, sweet dreams, love you lots. Bye bye tortoise.